Massive welcome or welcome back to Fallout Playbill Collect, everyone. I absolutely love the Fallout Shelter video game. I have the game on five different formats. I also love ball games, so I had to pick this one up. So now I have this game on six formats. This game is made by Fantasy Flight Games, who have a great reputation for quality in the ball game market. And it's a game for two to four players. And you can play a game anywhere from about 30 minutes up to about an hour. Now, as you can see here, this comes in this really lovely tin. So first impressions are fantastic here. I don't think they could have done a better job with the packaging. But what do we get inside? Let's crack this open and take a look. Once again, I have to say how nice this tin is. You can see here they've gone for this lovely embossed finish on the front. It's bright, it's colourful. This tin could almost be a collector's piece in itself. First off, we're greeted with what I presumed was a quick start guide. It actually turns out this is the full instruction manual. I think it's fair to say this gives us an indication this is going to be a very light and accessible game. And this manual is 10 pages long, and we have to give them a lot of credit here. It's the typical Fantasy Flight quality you'd expect. It's very bright, very colourful, everything is really well laid out and well explained. Fantasy Flight have gone for a very brief show, don't tell type approach to this manual. And you can see that with all the lovely diagrams and pictures. And on the back here, we get a section with all the logos and symbols from the game. Next up, we have this card sheet with our tokens and our control panels. There's four of these control panels. They're used to govern how much resources each player has. And these tokens are happiness. Happiness is the thing you use to determine who's winning the game. Now stay tuned, later on in the video I'll get all of these components out and we can take a closer look at them. These plastic cubes are used as tokens to represent how much you have of each resource. And we have these four bags in different colours representing Vault Boy skill bobbleheads. These are a nice touch to tie into the main Fallout game. And you use these to represent your Vault Dwellers and essentially they're your workers that you place out to gather your resources or to fight enemies. These come in four colours of plastic, one for each of the possible players in the game. Now on to two decks of cards. First we have this full size set of cards, these represent mostly the locations. And secondly we have these half size cards, and these represent items like clothing, weapons and pets. We'll take these cards out of the packaging and take a closer look in a moment. Our final item is two standard D6 dice. This plastic inlet tray has been designed in a way that all of your components will fit back in the tin for tidy storage in between games. Now let's take a closer look at all of the components laid out and we can have a look at the quality of these components as well. These player control panels are a nice thick card and they should prove to be durable for long-term play. Happiness tokens are also again nice and thick, very easy to handle. Now let's take a close look at these cards. These larger cards are used to represent the locations in the game. And as you can see, the graphics on them are taken straight out of the video game. And much like the video game, each of these locations has a written skill on it. And matching up those skills provide the resources that you can see in the green logos at the top. The cards themselves have this nice textured finish on them that makes them quite easy to pick up and handle. And the card itself is nice and thick and it gives an impression that they give good durability. Our second card deck is much smaller and they're used to represent items in the game. And we have everything here from outfits to weapons, the junk items, we even have the pets, and of course things aid items like stim packs. Once again, these cards are nice and bright and colourful. They use the graphics straight out of the Fallout Shelter game and they really add to the thematic nature of the game itself. But of course, if you intend to play this game a lot, you may choose to put the cards in sleeves. In this game, each player controls one level of the vault, and here we have the cards that govern your level by way of the elevators. Finally, we have the hazard cards. These are really interesting. They're printed on clear plastic. The idea being here is that when a hazard occurs, just like in the game, you place one of these cards over the area, and it blocks the resources for that area until you defeat the enemy or put out the fire or whatever the hazard may be. Once again, the cards are very well made, lovely quality, and they cover all the hazards, anything as simple as a fire to red roaches, mole rats, right up to raider attacks, red scorpions, and even a deathclaw. 
Now, if you'd like to see me do a playthrough of this game, maybe here on the channel, or maybe you'd like to see me do a full review with a description of how the game works, let me know, leave me a comment, and I'll see if I can put that together for you. My first impressions of this over just a couple of playthroughs, mind you, is it's a very quick, easily accessible, easy to play game. It has some good mechanics in there, but nothing too deep. Overall, it's a good family fun beer and pretzels type of game. One negative thing I have to say is it's a little bit odd to be playing competitively in a vault, and I think there absolutely should have been a solo mode. It's the big glaring thing that's missing from the game. Now, it's just my take on it, but to me, this game was crying out to be played as a solo. I'm going to leave a couple of links below. The first one will be to the Board Game Geek page. Lots more details there, lots more options. And I'll leave a link to our US and UK Amazon affiliate sites. If you want to pick up the game and you do it through those sites, you can help support the channel at the same time. And you'll also have my deepest gratitude and appreciation. And of course, I have to thank this month's supporters. Whether it's just a one-off or a regular contribution, you can help the channel now over on Patreon and buy me a coffee. The links are in the description and every penny goes to making new content. Now, if you're still watching, you'll definitely like some of my other content. Here's my suggestions of what to watch next. Don't forget to smash the like button before you go and I hope to see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.